Right, her name's Dawn. Yeah. Uh, just say to her, just say this, just heard from Charlie, and there's a hundred pound for you. Yeah. Make sure Little Spoon gets a drink. Right, okay, mate. And she know exactly what I mean. Will do, no problem. That's fantastic. Now, it's possible she may be at work, but if she's at work, yeah. right, you leave the message on the answer machine anyway. I can just drop her a text message, mate, which is easier. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You, you need to know where, where, where to send it, don't you? Yeah, yeah. She can reply to me, mate, and then I can exactly. get the details. Exactly. So I've got £100 for you from Charlie, and make, uh, it's to make sure you get a little spoon of drink. No problem. I'll get that sorted today. Right, fire away. Good stuff. Okay, Charlie, December now. The parole's been put back. What's going on? Every time my jam roll comes up, for the last 30 odd years, they start playing games. And this is the biggest, cruelest, nastiest game they've ever played, ever. Now, I was expecting my jam roll to be in July or August. It's now two and a half years late. Two and a half years late. They've now said it's been put back again to the 12th of December. So by the time I go up, if I go up, because it's possible, they could put it back again. When I go up on the 12th of December, that will be three years of my life I may not have had to serve. Now, I'm going to be 70 in December, so a 70-year-old man's going up for his jam roll, when I should have had it when I was 67. It's an absolute disgrace. They're sucking away my life for no reason. The only reason is retribution. Revenge. They don't want me to get out. After all they've done to me for nearly 50 years, brutalise me in every fucking shithole I've been to, they're, they're terrified of letting me out. Anyway, all I'm going to say to this is, what's happened is a liberty, it's going to be exposed, and anyone with half a brain can see what's going on. They want me to kick off. They want Charlie fucking Salvador to kick off so they can wring their hands and say, now see why we didn't let him out. Well, it ain't going to happen, Stevie boy. I'm going to fucking take it on the chin, mate, and uh, prepare for the 12th of December. Charlie, in March this year, the government were talking about changing the parole system and the, the plans were... In, in a nutshell, to give the minister's power to block prison release of some of UK's worst criminals. So yep. their idea would be the most dangerous criminals might have their releases vetoed by ministers. The new, yep. the new powers would mean that certain criminals' releases will have to be signed off first. And victims will also be able to take part in parole board hearings for the first time. Do you think yep. you're just a statistic in this particular game? Right, what you just said there, I don't like to say it, but I agree with what they're saying. Because child killers, paedophiles, uh, serious uh, uh, serial killers, whatever, why should they get parole? Yeah. You know, they've, take, they've taken children's lives, they've, they've destroyed families' lives. I make it right. In fact, if I had my way, I'd hang the fucking lot of them. But the truth is, with me, no crime I've committed on the outside world deserves or warrants me not getting parole. My crimes have mostly been committed in prison, where I fought for prisoners' human rights. And the truth is... What a lot of people fail to realise out there, when I got this life sentence in 1999 for taking a hostage in prison, 
a man I, I didn't harm, I've never harmed him, but I've got life. My tariff was three years. And the judge sentenced me, he sentenced me to a tariff of three years. He never meant 23 years, he meant three years. Now I am 20 years over that tariff. Now my last nearly five years, my reports have been excellent. I've changed, I've become an artist, I've rehabilitated myself, I'm planning to live in Devon away from all the crime and all the villains. I've turned a chapter in my life, I've, I've, I'm more relaxed, I'm chilled out, I'm not a danger to anybody, but I still say I've never been a danger to the British public. If so, who to? Who have I killed? Who have I raped? Who am I a danger to outside? Nobody. Yeah, I, I agree with you 100%. Is so that... I, I've, I've served 20 years over my time. Now, people don't realise this. 20 years in prison is a bloody lifetime. It's a lifetime, Steve. I'm 70 years old in December. 70. What fucking danger am I to anybody? And they've still got me down as category A. Eh? They've still got me down as Britain's most violent man. How does that work out? Is there anything more that you can do or your legal team can do? No, we've done everything. We've done everything. We've put in complaints. We've challenged it. Blah, blah, blah. Once the parole boards say it's 12th of December, that's when it is. There's not a lot you can do about it. It probably could be because of, I'm going to have a public hearing, which which I fought for and I'm going to get, because the, the reason I want a public hearing, I want the public to see what vindictive bastards these people really are. It's vindictiveness. It really is, honestly. It's unbelievable. Even I can't believe it. And, and this last, uh, shall we say, two and a half, three years... Do you know that I've been locked up 23 hours a day? Yeah. I mean, I'm in solitary, basically. I get an hour's exercise and that's it. I'm locked up. This last three weeks, I've literally been locked up 23 hours a day. And I'm not even on punishment and I'm not in a punishment wing. I should be coming out four, five, six hours a day. Well, they keep going on about rehabilitating. How are they rehabilitating me? 23 hours a day in my cell. Just, just remind us as well, there's another thing to add to that. Explain what it's like if you have to go to the dentist. If I have to go to the dentist, I have to bring a van round, get six officers and a dog handler, cuff me, double cuff me up, put me in the van and drive me 50 yards to the dentist, the hospital wing. Anyone else on this unit, when they go, they walk over. They walk over to the dentist. I'm the only man on this unit who has to go in a van. And I'm told the reason I have to do that is because I'm high profile and they don't want other inmates to see me. Is there anything that your supporters or the general public can do? Well, all I will say is this. If I lose my parole in, in December the 12th, if I lose my parole and I have to do another two years... I predict there's going to be serious consequences outside because my friends and my loyal supporters and my family are now disgusted with what's happening. They're absolutely disgusted. And it's not down to me. I, I have changed. My reports are absolute perfection. Legally, really, it's um, it's so frustrating because you fought hard and you fought hard to get to where you are with the public hearing. But on top yep. of that, Charlie, you you know you've you've turned over a new leaf. You're ready for yep. you're ready for release. Absolutely, absolutely. I've got me up. Look, with me being seventy anyway, I don't have to work because I'm an old age pensioner. But I can make a bloody good living out of my art alone. Yeah. So I've actually come into prison as a villain, nasty bastard, no doubt about it. I've come into prison, right? And I've changed. I've become an artist. I'm going out as an artist. I swapped my sawn-off shotgun for a sawn-off paintbrush. 
and I'm happy to come out there now and make a living out of my art. I a bloody good living at all. It's it's just so frustrating for us all on the outside. It, it, it's sad. It, it, it's sad. And, and, and at my time of life now, every year that's whizzing by, it's, it's just, they're just squeezing another year out of my life. And it, it's unnecessary. It, it, it's senseless. They just want to make an example of me. Oh, look what happens. Did you see what happened to that Charlie Bronson geezer? He's done 50 years. 50 years, that's what you get if you pull the roofs off and take hostages. But what people don't realise, why did I pull the roofs off? Mm. Why did I take the hostages? There's a reason behind all of it. Of course there is. Of course there is. You don't do it for the, the fun of it. I was fighting a, a horrible, evil, brutal system. Oh, it's not as bad nowadays. You know, you've got tellies and things, but when I'd come in prison, we had nothing. You had a, a piss pot, a jug of water, and if you got a library book, you was lucky. It's a, it's a frustrating thing for me, Charlie, to hear you uh, make this phone call today, mate. And uh, I just hope that, you know, the 12th of December brings us all some happy news. And this, this well, can all be... I can, all I can say is, Steve, don't feel uh, bad over that bad. I know you're a good mate of mine, and a lot of my mates out there are, are, are sick and gutted over it. But don't be. Just wait until the 12th of December, see what happens. And if I get a knockback, well... We're all going to have to get our heads together and fucking expose what's going on, mate, because it is now becoming sanity, mate. They cannot justify another year of my life. They ju- they, like I say, they just squeezed another six months out of my life for no reason. I could go up next week. All the paperwork's here. It's all ready. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. And they've not even given a reason. There's no reason for it. Let's hope that... You know, we get the best Christmas present we could have, Charlie, which is you walking out those gates. Well, that would be nice, and uh, they wouldn't be giving me anything because I've actually earned it. I've actually earned it. For once in my life, I've fought the right way. I've swallowed the the humble pie. I've wiped my mouth. I haven't attacked anyone for years. I'm just an artist. That's all I am now, is an artist. I'm not a dangerous man. I'm not a terrorist. I'm not going to come out and mug your grandmother and... You know, set fire to houses. I, I read in the paper the other day an arsonist. He got three and a half years for 50, setting fire to 50 shops and houses. Now, he should have got fucking life. He's the danger to society and he's got three and a half years. He'd do 18 months of that and get out. Crazy, mate, isn't it? There's no just... one person out there, out in that fucking beautiful world, what I call the wonderful world, and it still is, even though with all the pain and misery that's going on, it's still a wonderful world, and I want a bit of it. And I'm not a danger to nobody out there. No one whatsoever. I love people. I don't, I don't fucking hate people. I'm not going to kill... I'm not going to start killing people at 70 years old, am I? And why do I need to do another robbery? I've got money. I'll have a lot more when I get out. And that's what they're frightened of, mate. Me becoming a success. Keep your chin up, mate. If, I'll tell you one thing, though. One thing for sure. If they had a brain amongst them, all these fucking prison headquarters people, they could actually fucking use me to help people from coming to prison. Of course they could, yeah. And I'll do it. I'll go around the schools and tell them, stay, stay away from crime. Stay away from drugs. I, I, and they'd listen to me, kids. I've got, I've got nothing to lie about. Anyway, the boss is gone. I've got to go, brother. Take care, brother. Speak to you soon. Uh, love you. Love you, mate.